<laughs> how am I gonna explain this? Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. It's magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. It's magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. Hey guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg, and yes, today we've got another pickup story, another pickup for you. Uh, and as per the title, this one was actually on Father's Day. But it's Father's Day, right? And I'm a father, surely I'm allowed to do my own thing on Father's Day. Well, anyway, um, I, in terms of the story with this one, guys, I had, I had my wife's birthday uh, the night before, and um, she, um, she had hired out the Burswood Hotel um, for us all to stay as a family because our daughters were dancing there that, that, that night before anyway. So we thought we'd just, you know, stay there overnight and um, enjoy her birthday and go out for dinner and stuff. And um, have a bit of a bet, which was a bad move, but anyway. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, we, we had a, we had a good time. And in the morning, um, before we checked out, we had a late checkout, so we thought, oh, we'll head down to the pool and uh, sit out there. Now, it was actually, it was a really sunny day, but it was actually really cold, but the kids wanted to go for a swim, so sure, off they went. And I sat down on, lounged on one of the big sun lounges, and um, I was looking around like, yeah, this looks pretty nice, nice surroundings and stuff. So um, enjoying it, and then I'm like, hmm, I'll just um, maybe I'll just get my phone and uh, just check my, you know, my email messages, and um, maybe I should uh, maybe I should check Gumtree. <laughs> Why? 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 So yes, I check Gumtree, guys, and as I'm flicking through Gumtree, sitting on this lounge chair. Um, a little bit seedy from the night before, I must say. Uh, but anyway, I was sitting there flicking through, and then this came up. Now, for you guys in Australia, you would know, you'd recognise this cabinet pretty much straight away. For you that aren't in Australia, you may not recognise it. So, this is what they call a LAI fat boy. <laughs> you heard it right, it's a fat boy. So they have the low boys, which is sort of the, the sort of um, skinnier versions of this uh, with a 20 inch monitor. This has a 25 inch monitor in it. Um, and it's an interesting form factor. So again, if you're not in Australia, you probably wouldn't have seen this sort of cabinet overseas. Now, when you first look at it, it's like, okay, it seems like a sort of fairly generic cab and um, it, it sort of is. It, it, it actually is suitable for lots of different games and LA, I used it as a general sort of uh, cab in Australia for putting in games with a big 25 inch monitor, which is just awesome for, for sort of two player um, uh, games. And Guys, I have actually been looking at this particular form factor for some time. Um, obviously, it doesn't have a nostalgic value for me, um, but this cab ticks a lot of boxes uh, as a MAME replacement machine. So if you look at my old MAME machine, which um, which <laughs> even though I hacked it together myself, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it does its job, but the control panels, I've, I've said before, needs to be completely redone. That was sort of temporary, the way it was set up with all the additional controls, and it's not even symmetrical. Um, and the triple screen, everything works really well. Um, I've talked about using the LCD in that particular box and it works because of the way I've got it set up and stuff um, with that black frame insertion with groovy MAME and you know, it's really, really silky smooth um, and, it, and, it, and it's good for that. But it's, it's, not an, it's not a real CRT guys. And I find that even though that main box is awesome for the triple screen and just exploring, looking at games, really to play, you know, playing on, on there is not as good. It's definitely not as good as playing on a real cabinet. And I don't know how to describe that. It's just, there's something about being on a solid real cabinet um, from back in the day that just makes all the difference when, <laughs> when you're playing MAME. And of course, having the real monitor, you know, through the CRT, it's always going to be better than an LCD. So in the back of my mind, I thought this would be a cool cabinet to get because um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's got the big 25 inch monitor. The way it's sort of laid out um, in terms of like it sort of sits down and, and, and like semi-horizontal, um, 
um, it, it's it's sort of quite compact. It's not and it's not too high and bulky, so it's sort of similar to what I have. It's it's, it's clearly a lot bigger because it comes out further, um, but it is similar. I can't put my fridge underneath it, unfortunately, just the way that everything is sorted in there. But I've got another idea for that, um, which we'll go through another day. But uh, so I would lose the fridge, but I thought everything else I could transfer from my, my main box currently and stick it in here. And that way I've got, you know, another real cab and I can get rid of the, you know, the, the makeshift cab that, that, I, uh, that I built. Um, and the other really important aspect of this cab is the width of it. So the width of this is, is quite wide and the third triple screen for the marquee on my existing main cab it, that's actually sort of cut into the wood slightly, even on my on my build. Um, it's it's quite wide. It won't fit in a standard any other sort of standard cab, but it will fit perfectly in this fat boy cab in the uh, marquee area. So, um, so I think it's going to work really well. The, the my marquee is not quite as uh, high as the one uh, in the fat boy, but it will certainly fit in there nicely, nice and square, without you know damaging the cabinet at all. And, uh, and then I can run it, you know, still with the triple screen. Uh, in fact, I'm looking at maybe even having a, an additional screen sort of above, which will run the hyper spin and everything. And then when you choose a game that will actually run on the 25 inch, plus having the flyer screen, plus the marquee and having four, effectively four screens running off it. Um, that's all yet to be done on another day. <laughs> um, but that's why I got attracted to this cabinet. And of course, guys, as you know, as I say again and again and again, for every single pickup, it's got to be about the price. It's got to make absolute financial sense in terms of uh, it being a really, really good deal. Otherwise, I just will not go for it. Um, you can wait around. You can get really good deals if you wait. And uh, and again, for me to justify this hobby um, <laughs> to my wife and, and others, it's uh, much easier if uh, I'm getting good deals and really actually making a bit of an investment in some way. So so this one with the, with the price, I... I um, I thought, oh, this 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 is definitely a, definitely a good deal. Now it did actually say it, it had two games in it, um, Street Fighter and Alien vs Predator. And uh, for those of you who know, they like got Capcom um, CPS two games. So I thought that was interesting, um, and I thought, I wonder how he's got that set up. And then uh, he said there was a couple of problems. There was one that he couldn't get, he couldn't coin up Alien vs Predator, something wrong with the coin mech. Uh, he couldn't put it on free play, and uh, with Street Fighter, he could put it on free play, so he could play it, but he couldn't get the sounds working on it. So those were a couple of the problems. Otherwise, it looked really good. Um, went over there, uh, went to pick it up, really nice guy. It was really his only machine. He had it and it's, you know, next to his pool table. He was about to move, going to a, a new flat, didn't have really room for it. Um, and I think he you know, he wasn't really technical to be able to fix the problems that he had. So he wanted to move along pretty quickly. He was having a bit of a garage sale. Um, and, I was, and sorry guys, and, and before I actually got there, the, the, I didn't actually decide um, that day, because that wasn't Father's Day, like the, the following the following day after um, my wife's birthday. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, so when I, um, I came home that day, I still saw that it was there, but I was like not, you know, I, I thought, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to pick it up. Um, it was, and, and because of the price, I, I really did think it was going to be, um, it was going to go quickly. So I just thought, no, I'll just leave it. And so it was the following day on Father's Day, um, and after doing all the Father's Day celebrations and stuff in the morning, um, I was sitting down and I just went to check it again. And that's when I saw it was still there. And I thought, oh. <laughs> and I thought, ah, oh, no, for the price and everything, and given the, what I wanted to do with it, I thought, yeah, I'll go go get it. So anyway, back to his place um, in terms of the story, and uh, yeah, I I got it out of there. It's got big wheels on the back, so it's pretty easy to to leverage out. I had my son with me, um, thanks, Dylan, and um, and we got it in the back of uh, my wife's uh, car quite quite easily actually uh, because again it's not so high so it just sort of tipped into the back and fit in there without a trailer so that was all good it's pretty damn heavy mind you with that big 25 inch screen in there um, but we got it in there and uh, and yeah and that was the afternoon of, of Father's Day you know I mean we did the big celebration in the morning guys so it was not like you know I was really taking out some valuable family, family time um, but it did take a couple of hours to get out there loaded up 
up and, and bring it home. Um, and of course, when I brought it home, I, I put it in the uh, out by the front door here, and um, I then thought to myself, "Well, uh, where is it going to go? <laughs> where, where is it going to go in the theatre? <laughs> Every single time I do a pickup, I'm like, I've got no room. I've still got the two Daytonas sitting outside, guys. Okay, I've got nowhere to bring them into the theatre." Um, Although I do have a plan for that, <laughs> plan for another day. Uh, but yeah, I didn't have uh, immediate room. But what I did have, uh, guys, was I had the um, uh, the championship sprint in here still. And again, if you go back a few episodes, I did talk about that. I was going to sort of convert it into a defender style cabinet, so it would be like straight up and you know, I think a multi Williams sort of thing. I think that would work really well for that cab and still kept the cab without you know. Um, defacing it or anything could always put it back to the championship sprint but um basically that you know it wasn't running i've been taking the boards out to fix the super sprint here and um and oh by the way you can see i've got the uh i've got the pinball <laughs> pinball going in terms of the full screen on the back glass now that's all working sweet and i tell you what i've been playing some uh, virtual pinball 10 tables wow they are awesome um i've just been doing heaps of updates since getting this back and going again guys and having a huge fun so uh we we definitely need to do some some more um video on that so anyway where was i so yeah, so back to the championship sprint. So I, the, the boards I've been using in the super sprint anyway. So, and, and you know, I don't need them both in here. Um, well, clearly, the super sprint is fine. It's got the three wheels instead of the two anyway. Um, so I thought, look, let's get that guy out of the theater, get it into my overflow area, <laughs> so, which I've made. To, make, to get that into that overflow area, I had to move a lot of stuff, guys. Um, that was a mission in itself, but I got it out eventually. And then I ended up moving across the Neo Geo across into the corner, and then I've slotted it in uh, in between over there for the moment, because remember, this will replace the main box, but I just didn't want to go through that whole project of having to, you know, dismantle the main box and, and you know, it port it across into the other machine. And I also just didn't want to get rid of the main box and replace it with this when I could have two working machines instead of having the, you know, the championship sprint sitting in the corner. Anyway, all, <laughs> every single time, guys, there's all these things, these considerations, <laughs> try to think about where things should go, is it worth working is it worth being in here what am I going to do and now that's the biggest problem I have it's a constant juggle but I am getting closer I am definitely getting closer to having the cabinets that I want in this theater and then it's about more about the configuration of what cabinets play what games um, but it's really coming together guys so I think sometime soon I'm going to do like an update of the uh, theatre uh, in totality so look out for that if, you, uh, if you're if you not a subscriber please subscribe and you'll see that coming up uh, in so, well, a future episode coming up uh, not immediately but I'll certainly do that and then that will then set the scene for what I'm going to do next uh, in here so anyway um, getting back to this pickup um, how about I show you the cabinet and uh, and a few things that I found out about it. And guys, here it is. And as you can see, it's uh, fitting in actually with all the red theme I've got going on here. <laughs> um, I will actually look at doing putting some uh, maybe some custom side art on the side of here, although can't really see it here at the moment. But once it's spun around in the uh, position of the main box. You'll be able to see the side, so I might do that and cover the front too, just to tone down the red a little bit and give it something else, a little bit of something special, given that it will be a sort of a multi-main box. Um, but other than that, you can sort of see, you know, the form factor here is is really quite quite awesome. You see how it's lower than a normal cab. We've really got the uh, the Neo Geo next to it, which is really in the form factor of a normal low boy. You can see definitely the, the fatness difference between the uh, what would be a low boy style cab and the uh, the fat boy, uh, and clearly the big 25 inch uh, monitor on here. It says it was also missing a few buttons, which was um, interesting. 
how they got mis how they got taken out <laughs> but anyway they're uh, they're not there um, easily to replace the uh, MCA joysticks are all sweet we have a lock on here which would have had a padlock when this was used uh, out on location and coming inside here this is pretty typical uh, layout for these fat boys and um, you'll see straight away that there's a couple of big blue boxes in there and there's one here and one up here and both both of these are the CPS2 uh, board sets so we've got the the A board which I believe is the uh, the processor board in there and then the game board and they uh, they can operate uh, on them but you know effectively by themselves as an all-in-one uh, you can actually like swap out the B boards with the games on it and with another A board uh, within the same cartridge but generally they sort of get sold and moved around um, and complete and these things aren't cheap guys actually so this one here is the street fighter one and here's the alien vs predator one um, and i'll tell you now that it easily because the alien vs predator actually is a quite a rare cps2 game and quite sought after so the price of that is actually pretty high uh, the street fighter or this particular version of street fighter uh, 2 is not um not really well sought after uh, and it's plentiful um, around the place, so it's not worth a lot. But basically, the, for the price of both of these on their own is the price I paid for the whole thing. Okay, so again, effectively working it out, I've got the cabinet, you know, the monitor, and all the hardware that's in here effectively for free. Um, and the cool thing is, is that, you know, I, I may not hang on to these CPS2 um, board sets because uh, this is more than likely um, going to have a jammer pie in here so because it's going to be multi-game initially. And then, of course, it's going to swap in the whole computer setup to do the four screen uh, main box later on down the track. So I'll, I'll certainly be able to get my money back um, and it will be effectively a free cabinet uh swap over so that's why guys I, I decided to to take it on in the meantime of course it's really uh interesting and cool to have a look at this hardware um, i'm not familiar with the capcom cps2 stuff so it's good to have uh, some finally to to check it out um, the other thing is is that uh, with these lai cabinets you know they're built really really well in here and um, you can see you know i mean this is all plywood it's not chip poured so again it's a really really solid cab guys really solid so that was really important to me as well and this has you know a drawer that slides out so it's sort of easier to to service it um, some of the other stuff around the back is like right over around the back in terms of the uh, the monitor transformer and that sort of thing but everything else is quite easily accessible up here you've got this really cool LAI uh, distribution box um, and again with all the hardware and the connection points for that so yeah there's a, you know again there's a lot of hardware in here the coin mix are all here um, I've, I've managed to quickly fix the problem just temporarily with the coin mix um, I found I moved both of the mechs, one of the mechs, there's like four um, switches in here for the mechs and uh, initially they weren't working. Uh, I think this one was joined over to here. I moved it over onto here in terms of the wiring. Um, and funnily enough, I'm even just adjusting it somehow, something's gone on and now when I put a coin in on that side, I actually get two credits. So like both of them are working. <laughs> so, but initially neither of them were. So I don't know what's going on there, but there's something funky with the switching. Uh, but anyway, that was a relatively easy fix. On the inside here, I've also got the monitor settings. When I first picked it up, um, the monitor, uh, didn't look that crash hot in terms of colors and I just came in here with a nice little daughter board off the uh, the back of this uh, monitor chassis here and that allows you to change the uh, the red blue and green um, and the brightness and so in um, Alien vs Predator there's a nice uh, I can show you that in a minute there's a nice little test screen to check the colors and that uh, allowed me to adjust it out which was cool and the other thing in here is uh, at the back just there is the degal switch so i've still got a little bit of issues with the monitor we'll fire it up here and uh, you'll see in a moment um, i got rid of the most of the degals issues but i think there's still something going on there so anyway let's uh fire it up and uh again it's a nice little switch under here to do that um and we've got also like you know there's the the uh, test switch here uh service switch 
uh, the volume control, coin counters, master fuse, and then the main switch. We turn it on. Um, it sounds a bit like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> so a few uh, old fans in the back. I'll see it come up, and we will get some. Uh, I'll just turn this light off here. We will get uh, a few problems on the the main screen, although I have sorted out a little bit. But you can sort of see on on this side, it's just uh, it's not quite as sharp. It might be hard to, to see um, on video actually. But I did sort it out quite a bit. Um, I can see there's a difference in the green on the left and the right. And uh, well, just let that uh, focus in. Um, but you know, it, it's actually pretty good, guys. It's, um, it's, it's reasonable. Um, funnily enough, that red is looking a little bit washed out from what I had it before. So let's turn this back on that's the light um yeah the red doesn't look as good as it was you know we'll come back to that maybe it's just sort of warming up still and uh and at the back here i mean i've got some there's a front light on here so that's lighting the front of that up so that's not backlit there might be a, a light in the back that is um has failed but yeah so uh alien vs predator working sweet with sound and if I uh, drop a dollar in because I went into the test area and I couldn't see that it did, did actually support free play I don't think it does um, so I could drop a dollar in the front here and uh, there we go it's got the coins and the reason why guys I'm not just flicking it from here normally you can go in here and just um, uh, flick the button uh, on here but I, I can't actually get to it because they put these like these little security plastic things here so you can't, you can't quite get your finger in there to uh, to get that down so there you go um, so anyway I got it working just by uh, using a coin so let's have a, a look, quick look of the game so guys this is not a game that I am familiar with at all <laughs> and I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, that do know this game well, obviously, and absolutely love it. Um, but it just really wasn't one. Now, this is a little bit later. This is in that period where I was sort of not doing a lot of video games. I was out, uh, you know, more at the pub and clubbing and stuff like that. Um, okay, what am I doing? What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Why have I got overheat? I've got to use this other button, I think. So, but Aliens, you know, the Alien, original Alien movie was just awesome. And, um, and then they followed them up with the, the successes, which were more just a big alien monster fest, whereas the first one was almost like a scary suspense thriller horror. Um, and at the time, nothing, there was nothing really else out, out there like it, so it was pretty freaky. Um, but yeah, look at the screen guys, look at this, is actually really nice. I just feel there's a lack of sharpness just on, on the side slightly, on the right hand side. Um, Super Magazine, eh? Alright, oh, okay, well that's cool. So I think I've got to give this game a bit of a, uh, bit of a go. I might actually start uh, liking it. Um, not that I didn't like it, it's just that I don't really know all the nuances and all the weapons and stuff but it's pretty cool and I'm really not sure what I'm doing <laughs> I'm obviously overheating I'm supposed to sort of like reload or or maybe just okay not sure <laughs> but again this big screen guys really cool for two players nice and comfortable side by side um, I potentially can change out the panel here too and turn it into a, like a four player um, and then play all the four player games you know again with this sort of size screen it's awesome doing really bad here guys I'm like <laughs> I'm sort of talking and not really concentrating on what I'm doing and this overheat thing is not working well for me <laughs> I want to know 
Okay, so that's that's my gun needs to recover. How does how does that gun recover? I'm trying to work that trying to work that out. Oh, there's the overheat. All right, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll get better. <laughs> I promise. All right. Well, let's flick in the Street Fighter um, CPS2 board, and we'll be able to just change it over because it's just jammer, and, uh, and we'll see how that runs. So, guys, yeah, it's pretty easy to swap these over. Um, effectively, it's just a, this is just your standard jammer harness here. So we just uh, pull that guy out, and uh, and then you've got um, this one here, which is your kick harness, and that's because jammer only supports natively um, three. Uh, three button sets, uh, throw all three lots of buttons, and of course Street Fighter requires six. So you, this guy um, provides the uh, the, the extra um, uh, well, kick buttons and so forth. On the bottom here we've got stereo out, so it supports stereo out um, with their Q sound technology. And if you don't have that hooked up, it's going to use the sound coming out of the jammer harness, which is what I've got currently, and it sounds pretty crap pretty ordinary to be honest so at some stage it'll be nice to use these get some rca outs from here going into a separate and even like a pc amp again like a 2.1 with a with a sub uh, and then that will really really crank uh, hanging off these and of course once i go to pc then i'll just go straight through to a 2.1 sort of system anyway so coming over here we just need to get this into here and uh, get the jammer edge connector on there and then we're off and running so i'll just do that um i can't do that with one hand because this is loose so let me just get that sorted and we'll get the game started right all plugged in ready to go there's the kick harness in and the uh, jammer edge connector is on so let's uh turn on this guy And here we go, we have Street Fighter and we have sound. <laughs> so that's really bizarre because I did not have sound before. Now I did see um, online there is actually on the uh, CPS2 board itself, I believe there is a volume control on the board and you can hold that down as you turn the game on um, and keep it held down until effectively it you know, fully boots. And that apparently sort of resets the level of sound and um, and then, uh, and then it should come good. So, uh, if you have got a, a board like I did with sound problems, you can try that. But I, all I've done, I've actually just swapped it from one to the other and back, and now I've got sound. So, so bonus. This is on free play. So I should be able to just kick in and start. And Street Fighter guys. Um, you know, funnily enough. It's again, and I'm only playing with four buttons. I don't have, I don't have all my kicks. Um, but that, that's a weak excuse because I'm just crap at this game. Um, <laughs> and as you can see, I haven't even. Okay, cool. I'm going to be not. All right, at least I got one punch in. Wow. Um, I think I could like this game. I mean, I like Mortal. I like Mortal Kombat sort of better. I just love all the the, the kill moves and the uh, fatalities and just the way the uh, the voice acting is in. Um, in Mortal Kombat, you know, with the finishing and all that stuff, it's just so cool. Um, but I think I could get to like this, and regardless, if you, you know, you're with a mate or whatever, having a crack and a beer, um, this, you know, it's best played head to head instead of against the AI, it's much more fun. Uh, especially if both of you are not very good at it, then it sort of just makes it a little bit more even. Otherwise, I am going to lose every game. <laughs> but look at the screen guys again it looks really really nice um, I'll just pop into the settings here let's just flick the test switch so you can see here input output system config uh, and here we've got the free play um, you can set it to it so it's even on its easiest setting and I was doing poorly uh, you can go to sound that's where you go to stereo and then that will come out of your RCA, those RCA outputs uh, you can turn off the demo sound of course if you can continue or not so yeah well, you've got all your options in here um, on uh, the Aliens one, we didn't have the ability to put it on free play, which is why we need to use the coin. Oh, hop out of here was one player. And there's memory tests and sound and so forth. The colour one, it was uh, the good one, so that gave me the ability. So when I came in here, all of these were all over the shop. And uh, 
using the brightness control and those color pots I bought everything up I've noticed I can't quite get the red up to the same level so there is a bit of a problem with that but otherwise it's looking pretty good it's um, got a little bit of uh, issue with the um, with the convergence uh, down the bottom here but again I actually sort of still quite like that <laughs> it's just sort of part of uh, I think playing an arcade game on a CRT uh, which is all cool we've got the dot cross hatch we'll hit that guy and we can see so right over here I don't know if you can see that guys but on this side in particular uh, I can definitely see it needs to still to be more degauss um, I've degauss it several times already but it's still going a bit orange over this corner um, where that red line is and just this bit here is a little bit fuzzy that's all um, and if I'm really still looking at this picture yeah it's got a slight um, and not that noticeable I thought it might have had a little bit of a wobble I think it's my just my eyes um, you can see it can the um, convergence is getting a bit off here with the with the blue and the reds come, coming away from the lines but anyway it's a nice a nice test um, it's possible the, the chassis may need a bit of work um, to resolve this properly maybe a little bit more degaussing will get rid of the uh, the coloring on there but look I'm, I'm being you know not not overly fussy because it's nice to have it um, have it sorted and have it nice but um, and you know having a perfect picture but it's certainly playable and usable right now Okay, so to get out of here, um, I need to exit, but I can't exit while I've still got the test switch on, so let me just turn the test switch off. And now I can, uh, now I can exit out. And there we go. Alright guys, well let's uh, wrap this video up. And there you have it guys, so uh, I think uh, I think it's a great, great pickup. Um, it's an awesome, awesome form factor in terms of a cab. It's going to make a really, really good main box once we get that dynamic marquee stuck in the back here. It's going to look awesome. The screen is just oh, it's so nice being so big and, you know, this flat control panel. Even putting in a trackball in here, guys, you know, if you like spin the trackball up, your hand's not going to sort of hit the, you know, any part of the wood here. It just really is a good form factor for a 25 inch. It's a lovely cab, full plywood, nice and solid. That's <laughs> exactly what I need. So another day we will get that swapped in to the main one. I still have to do some thinking and planning because I need to move the fridge, but I do have a plan for that, of course. Um, but that again is for another day so uh, plenty more of content coming up again guys and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe lots coming up um, and uh, I hope you guys have been uh, fixing your games playing your games and all that uh, all that good stuff I have been really really busy at work but I've been also busy getting other things organized um, we do have to get back to those Daytona machines and start having a look at those that we picked up rather rather rough and ready uh, but got some news on that front and uh, yeah there's a few other surprises coming up soon guys so make sure you subscribe until then please do look after yourself and take care of others and uh, let people enjoy your games and, and play them the more sharing and caring is a good thing I think and of course until next time ciao for now you must continue you can do it you are amazing the theater is now closed.